Welcome to Teaching Math with a Historical Perspective. This first lecture is split into five units. In this first batch, we look at the logistics of the course. My name is Oliver Knill. Please call me Oliver. I'm excited to teach this course again. It's now the ninth time, but it's the first time that this course is taught in a web conference format. Our focus is global. We look at all areas of mathematics, we focus on history and pedagogy. you find a PDF with the syllabus on my personal website. Uh, do find this, maybe just Google CNIL. Then under the news section there is a link to the course and you'll find then all the documents. So uh, one uh, document which is already there is a two-page handout authored and modified the last couple of years, uh, it's about the structure of mathematics. During class, we will look at some stories, some movies, slides, we discuss them, work on some problems, and prepare a bit for the assignment. <clears throat> there are many uh, great books around which uh, fit well as a background. Here are a few which we have used in the past. You don't have to buy a book, but if you visit the library, check something out. If you find something interesting not mentioned here, let me know. So here's a little bit a larger uh, list of books. Some of them are on a lighter side, like the math books or the curious history of mathematics, or the mathematics book with a spiral there, which is also very nice. And then there are many, many, many more. Uh, so here are a few uh, titles from my electronic library. And this is part of my a real library at home, not yet scanned in. <laughs> we have a, a project. Traditionally we have uh, at the end a project. Uh, here are the titles from the last eight times. This year we have something new. So uh, I would like to see four short stories. Uh, the title of the project is Four Millennia, Four Milestones and Four Lives should cover uh, the times 1000 until 0, 0 to 1000, 1000 to 2000, and 1000 uh, to now. <clears throat> and then we have uh, also some quizzes. The first quiz is already uh, will already be active shortly after this lecture. It will be due on Sunday. It has only five problems. You can answer this in five minutes. It's more also a little bit a test for me to see whether things work. And then we have another <coughs> uh, assignment which is more creative, which will be done in uh, uh, groups of two or three. And uh, one of the goals is that you also match up uh, outside the course. Uh, we will shuffle that a little bit over the semester. Uh, so your task will be mainly to get in touch with uh, another classmate until the next lecture. <coughs> if you have questions, please email me at uh, knil at math.harvard.edu. In this second unit, we make some attempts to bring structure into the landscape of mathematics. Some is summarized uh, on the two-page handout mentioned earlier. One of the earliest classification attempts for art and science are the seven liberal arts, uh, split into a trivium and quadrivium. I think it's also a great taxonomy for pedagogy, teaching. Grammar can be paired with the rules, which can be axioms or algorithms in mathematics. And there is logic, the process of reasoning on combining rules. And there is the process of communicating the argument in a proof or computation. For the quadrivium, we can see it as an allegory for formal, visual, artistic or explorational approaches. Arithmetic is more formal, geometry is more visual, music is more artistic, and astronomy more explorational. Here's a picture of the three muses in the trivium and an illustration of the quadrivium. There are many places where these seven liberal arts and sciences are illustrated. Here's a picture of Martin de Vos from the 16th century. You see here uh, all the seven liberal arts and sciences. 
There are also another approach, there's another approach uh, which now is more narrowly tailored towards mathematics and its classification into mathematical fields. According to these eight ancient rules, uh, one splits the field into activities, counting and sorting with arithmetic, spacing and distances, distancing with uh, geometry, positioning and locating with topology, surveying and angulating with trigonometry, balancing and weighing with statics, moving and hitting with dynamics, guessing and judging with probability, and collecting and ordering with algorithms. So here again, uh, uh, we will not we will follow this order uh, more or less in this course. Start with arithmetic, and then continue with geometry. Uh, also cover topology. The trigonometry trigonometry part is uh, is maybe you know, more part of geometry or calculus. Balancing and weighing is has moved to analysis. Moving and hitting that's dynamics. We have a course. Uh, part on dynamical systems and chaos, judging and guessing that will be a probability, probability theory. Uh, there will be a lecture about computer science uh, and algorithms. So here are the mathematical fields uh, which we cover in the course. This is a, a little bit more modern classification. You see from the 8 we have gone to 12. 12 uh, lectures. There are many classifications uh, possible. The EMS classification, for example, counts 64 disciplines, uh, where, by the way, not all numbers appear. The math education, for example, is entry 97. You find on the web also attempts to draw the landscape of mathematics in one picture. It will actually be an assignment for the next week to come up with your own map can be also covering only a narrow field of mathematics or the mathematics you are aware of. Uh, it should have a couple of entries, however, and this will also be a little bit a test to communicate with somebody else and see how you can manage to uh, uh, over distance to, to work together. In this third unit, we look at the role of history. How did things look like in the past? Who was building what we see? Why were they doing it? How did things become what we see now? Here is a picture of uh, Harvard Square about 100, 150 years ago and here it's how it looks, looks now with Google Earth. 90 years ago things were different but there were things which did not change much. Uh, this is a picture from today. Is it possible to visualize all the historical developments in one picture? Some have tried. Here are two attempts. One is uh, to the left, poster from a, one of the books we have seen. Uh, at the right is an illustration in, by Neugebauer, uh, redrawn by an illustration of Neugebauer. It tries to combine geographically different developments on a common timeline. Here's the upper part of that graphics you see y-axis is time, the geographic regions are the columns, the poster, first part and the second part. Geographically the origins of mathematics started in different areas of the world. We will talk about this throughout the semester. I drew this picture after uh, an illustration in the book The Crest of the Peacock, also a nice book uh, on the history of mathematics. Why are we interested in the history? One of the key insights about this has been formulated by Howard, Howard Eaves, who authored some great books in mathematics. Uh, this quotation is, a student should be taught the subject pretty much in the order in which the subject developed over the ages. It's a rule of thumb, but it's amazing how often the difficulties we see in the classroom parallel the difficulties of our ancestors developing the mathematics. Here's some documents. We can also look at many of them in detail during the semester. At next week, we start with the Ishango bowl and the clay tablets. Papyrus, uh, this is Euclid's text. We can look at in the geometry part. Uh, numbers were also written using knots. 
China, lots of mathematics has been developed in parallel to the mathematics in Greece. Here in a uh, famous manuscript, Bakshali manuscript, uh, where in, developed in India, written in India. The story is of the mathematicians who have developed the topic is often interesting, some, sometimes dramatic. Uh, there are lots of mathematicians who have worked uh, in the in the past and until today, so there's some faces from geometers, calculus, uh, dynamical systems, so polytops, four color problem, uh, central limit theorem, the modern times, the universality. What is the role of pedagogy? As most of you are teaching, sure consider this also an important question. Here is a quote from Michael Atia, one of the great geometers and analysts of our time. It is part of an answer why teaching is important. Passing of mathematics on to subsequent generations is essential for the future, and it is only possible if every generation of mathematicians understands what they are doing and distills it out in such a form that it is easily understood by the next generation. We want to communicate the knowledge to a larger audience, students. Here is a Descartes teaching Queen Christina of Sweden. Of course, there is also often a pay involved when you're teaching. In this case, in this case uh, uh, Descartes was hired by uh, the Queen. But it actually came with a great cost because Descartes always liked to get up late. Uh, but uh, Queen Christina wanted to draw tangents early in the morning. We had to get out, uh, walk through the cold in the morning, and soon died of pneumonia. Some mathematicians have pursued their teaching and research almost with a religious fanatism. We see a picture of the Pythagoreans. A wonderful picture of Raphael is called the School of Athens, painted more than 500 years ago. It can be seen in the Vatican in Italy. Also textbooks are important in teaching, texts in general. One of the first textbooks was writers in calculus was Hypatia. Uh, she's featured in the movie Agora. Teaching also happens in smaller groups, collaborations. You see Terry Tao, one of the star mathematicians today, with Paul Edersch. The story of teaching is interesting, and uh, there are not all, always agreements how to approach things. Uh, often many different opinions and ideas what is important. So there are some polarizations, like if you want to focus on content or concepts, how does one break stereotypes? Is it more social, or shall we approach it more social or more personalized? Direct classroom, flipped classroom, abstract examples or concrete examples, general or abstract, uh, Descartian or Baconian approach. We will look together uh, at a clip, Gifted, which is a recent movie uh, where a few uh, discussion points come up. And we will discuss this afterwards in in class. This is the end of part D. In this last unit we want to look at a few answers to the question what is mathematics? Benjamin Pierce, who was teaching math at Harvard, defined it as a science drawing conclusions. Claire Voisin, sometimes visits the math department, finds it as a creative drive trying to explain itself. In the book What is Mathematics? The authors Curon and Robbins suggest to do mathematics rather than to be philosophical about it. A definition of Vladimir Arnold, uh, who joked once, all mathematics is divided into three parts. Cryptography, paid by the CIA, KGB and the like, hydrodynamics supported by manufacturers of atomic submarines, and celestial mechanics financed by military and other institutions dealing with missiles, such as NASA. 
Simon Singh, who wrote many nice books, uh, has made a statement which appears a little bit dark, but this has also some hope because an information war is not as terrible as the wars fought earlier. He said, it has been said that the First World War was the chemist's war because mustard gas and chlorine were imp employed for the first time. The Second World War was the physicist's war because the atom bomb which detonated. Similarly, it has been argued that the Third World War would be the mathematician's war because mathematicians will have control of the next great weapon of war, information. Mario Livio, author of the book, is God a Mathematician, who is also an astronomer, uh, writes about the application of mathematics in that field. He says, as long as a theory of cosmology is not formulated in the language of mathematics, it is impossible to assess its relevance. There's an XKCD cartoon which deals with fields arranged by purity. There are also quite many movies, TV shows, YouTube contributions which try to answer the question. Throughout history, clips, humankind uh, has struggled to understand uh, the fundamental workings of, of the material world. world. Here are some pictures of mathematics, which somehow can also give an idea what mathematics is about. Pictures from chaos theory, networks. networks are graph theory. There's also relations with number theory, discrete mathematics, combinatorics. Topology, these are pictures from topology. Uh, art, or sculptures, so it's a very small object on the hair of an ant. There's a complexity. Uh, complexity is an important thing. This is a picture from dynamical systems theory, the Mandelbrot set, which has very simple rules which produce this extremely complex uh, object. In the architecture, one is motivated by mathematics, inspired uh, technology has a lot to do uh, with the visualization and communication of mathematics. We live in a great time of technology. For example, this classroom where people participate from different parts of the world is made, be made possible by, by technology. And uh, for visualizations, they are great tools and software. This is, has been done by mathe mathematical computer algebra system. 3D printing allows us to build objects not only in the computer but real and uh, computing devices. Uh, you see Leibniz, mathematician, a poor mathematician who was one of the founders of calculus also uh, constructed a computing device. In a time. Today we have the possibility to put things even in, in Google Earth.